Now, if you think back to a couple of videos ago, where we discussed MongoDB and where it sits within our application architecture, we identified that along with the application, the front end, the middle tier, and the back end, all those parts of an application, we identified that we also had what was called the data access layer or the DAO. So let's review that really quick so we can see where this new technology we're going to learn fits inside of that hierarchy. All right, now that I've got my squares, we've got our front end, we've got our middle tier, and then we have ourselves our database. And if we label those really quick to identify the technologies that we've already learned that make up those layers for this middle tier layer right here, we are going to be using, so let's call it the middle tier or the business logic layer. Call it the middle tier for right now. And in the middle tier, primarily what we are going to use is Express. And Express is going to be the application framework that we're going to be using in order to run this middle tier. And this is where all of our business logic lives. And then we just went through and learned about MongoDB. So this, of course, is our DBMS, or our database management system. And MongoDB fits right there in that layer. <coughs> And then we will be learning, after we're done learning about MongoDB, we'll be learning about our front end framework, and that is going to be React. But it also could be something like Angular, or it could be Vue, or any number of other frameworks that are out there that can be used to create single page web application front ends. We also identified when we were talking about the application architecture, we identify that there is a layer that kind of lives inside of this middle tier and sits right here inside of that middle tier, but kind of like right at the end of it. And it is our DAO or our data access layer. We call that a DAO. And for that, this is the translator that translate what happens here inside the middle tier. In other words, it takes all those business objects that we're manipulating and working with that come to us from the front end. It's, mo it's modifying and doing any kind of business operations on it, cleaning up the data, modifying the data, validating the data. And then we end up down here in the data access layer. The data access layer is this translator that knows how to speak between the middle tier and the database or the persistence layer where the database sits and where our DBMS is. And so we've got this data access layer that helps with transitioning data from the middle tier to the DBMS where all that data sits when it's at rest. And this is more like the, the data persistence transitory layer. It's when the data is moving. So we'll call this our transitory persistence layer. And this, of course, is when all of our data is at rest, we'll call it the restful data persistence layer. Now, those aren't official terminologies, but that's what we're going to use. So the data access layer, we are going to learn about a, a third party library. It's in NPM. So it's an NPM package that we can install into our middle tier application, which is our express application. And we can use it for accessing. That means pushing and pulling data from our DBMS or from MongoDB. So it's called Mongoose, and that is the name of that data access layer. Now, I just realized that I spelled Mongo incorrectly, and so it should be Mongo. I forgot the G in there. Go ahead and uh, excuse me for that. Let's go ahead and edit that out. Make sure we have it correct so we're not confused. So DBMS and Mongo. DB is our database management system where all of our databases are going to sit. All right, so let's model out how the data flows. It comes from the front end, from the user, goes to the middle tier. From the middle tier, after it does what it needs to do the data, it goes into the data access layer. And then from the data access layer, it then moves into the Data, database management system into MongoDB and then the database management system 
it is then responsible for making sure all of our data ends up inside of a database inside that layer. And so for our application, we would have a nice little database in here. Let's put it right here. This is our database. And so then the, the database management system, then it handles making sure that data goes to rest inside of our database. Right. So this is what we're going to focus on in the next several videos is this data access layer that is built or will be built on top of the mongoose library. And so the code that we're going to be writing will, of course, be our own custom code, but we will be leveraging the mongoose library that knows how to communicate with MongoDB. And we'll be using it to write all of our get, put, post, and delete. So right in here, when Express receives a, an HTTP get, put, post, or delete, we're going to be handling all of the CRUD operations directly into the database from this layer using the mongoose third-party library and its API. All right, so with an understanding of where Mongoose lies inside of, our inside of our application architecture, let's go ahead and begin setting up a little test application that we can learn Mongoose through. Now, we're not going to go through the process of setting up a full Express application. Instead, we're just going to do a regular little Node application, and we're going to let that Node application purely focus on Mongoose, so we're not worried about anything that might distract us, like routing and dealing with HTTP requests and responses. So let's go ahead and open up your finder and go to where it is that you usually store your applications. I, of course, have this dev folder that sits underneath my user account. And then I have repo for all of my actual projects that I'm working on. And then I have this sandbox where I do a lot of my sandboxing or when I'm just playing with stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder. And I'm going to call this mongoose let's do it mongoose dal d-a-l that'll stand for my data access layer so mongoose dal and then we're going to go ahead and open up our visual studio code and then with visual studio code we're going to go ahead and open up that particular so here's one of our old projects where we were learning about middleware we're going to do file open and then i am going to go to dev sandbox and my mongoose dal we're going to open that up and here we've got ourselves our brand new project go ahead and close some of these unnecessary tabs and we are now in the mongoose dal project so inside of that project area we're going to go ahead and first things first is we need to go ahead and initiate npm so that we can begin to use our the npm packages that we need for this being that mongoose is an npm package we definitely need to do that right now so go ahead and open up a terminal the terminal should open up at the root of our application right here at mongoose dal and then of course we're just going to do npm init like we've done so many times and i'm just going to go through and leave it as the defaults <coughs> and once we're done with the defaults click yes now we've got ourselves a package.json right here with our test application. And again, we're not using Express or any big complex framework right now. It's going to be just a simple node application that we're going to execute locally on our machine. It's not going to worry about web requests or anything like that. And so with NPM set up, now we just need to go ahead and get our Mongoose installed. So if we could do N PM and then we do mongoose right here. We should see the first one that comes up is mongoose-npm. It is in the npmjs.com, which means it is an official package of npm. Go ahead and click on that. And here's, of course, just like we've seen in the past, where we get the instructions for installing the mongoose library into our application into our application, and then how we go about using it once we have that application package installed. So let's go ahead and do an npm install mongoose on our application. So come back, go back to our terminal. Let's do npm install mongoose and then dash dash save because we want to make sure that it gets added as a production dependency or an application dependency inside of our application. Let it go through the installation. You can see mongoose is dependent upon 18 other packages. 
So it's a really complex library, but it does a whole lot of good for us and makes working with MongoDB extremely easy and provides a lot of functionality. Now, one of the coolest things that Mongo that Mongoose provides for us and when we are dealing with MongoDB is the fact that here, let's jump back to it here. Really, what it provides for us is models, which are a representation right here of the objects that we have inside of our application. So if we look at this right here, we've got a blog post. And then being that we have models, those models can have schemas. And a schema is where we define the data attributes that each one of our BSON objects must have when it gets put into a particular collection inside of a MongoDB. If you remember back to when we were talking about Mongo, Mongo just remembers your collections and it remembers that you have documents and it remembers which documents belong to which collection. But it does not control the data that those documents have in them, nor does it control that we have documents that are related in the same collection. Instead, if we tell it to put something in a collection, it'll just put it in the collection. And I think in our example, we had a user and then we had a blog comment and they were both in the same collection. And we kind of realized that that would create a lot of dirty data and make it really hard for us to organize our database. So with Mongoose, we can actually begin to use schemas and models and begin to define how we want our database to be structured. And Mongoose actually is the one that takes over making sure that that structure is enforced before documents are added to our MongoDB inside of collections inside of our database. We're going to go ahead and stop right there. In the next video, we will move further into all of the features of Mongoose.